Okay, in this one, I'm going to try to get across kind of a concept uh, on a PSC motor. Why the capacitor in the PSC motor makes it work. Now, in most cases, uh, a PSC motor that doesn't have a capacitor, that the capacitor is broken, it's disconnected, whatever, it won't start. There's a few of them that do it. I'm not sure why that happens, but we're not going to talk about that at this point. Now I've got a PSC motor right here, and I have the capacitor disconnected. Okay. So if I try to start it, plug some power into it, and if you can hear that, it's humming. It's not doing anything at all. So, it has to have that cap to start, and I'm going to show you that in a bit. But, there's two windings in these motors. There's a start winding and there's a run winding. Now, both windings are energized all the time. If this was, uh, say, a capacitor start, uh, the run winding may not be energized all the time. But in this case, with, this, uh, with a capacitor there, let's say, instead of uh, putting a capacitor in there, I took these two wires and just joined them together. Because that's a start winding. That's, that energizes a start winding when these motors are put together. So maybe it would start. So let's see if it does. Okay, as you can see here, I have just connected those together. Now, uh, will it start? Let's see. Okay, it still doesn't start. Even though I've got those windings, both windings energized. So, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this little run cap in there. And we'll see what happens then. Okay, now with the run cap in the circuit, you can see it turns. I'm not going to let it run up, it just blows air all over the place. Okay, it starts and runs and everything. If this thing was just sitting there humming and I didn't have a cap hooked in, I could get it to run by flipping the uh, rotor. I'm not going to do it at this point, there's no point to doing it. But it would start and run. It won't run with the right amperage. Uh, it won't run efficiently. But I could do that. So why does it make a difference to have this thing in here and not in there? Well, I'm going to show you a sine wave now, and we'll see if we can figure that out with the sine wave. Now here's my standard old sine wave. You know, zero volts, positive 120, actually probably more like 150, down to zero, negative 120, and on. That's what this motor sees. So when you hear that hum, you're hearing the peak here and the peak here. And of course this is reversing every time this reverses, 120 times a second in the US, it is going to magnetize the field winding of the motor, it's going to magnetize it positive, magnetize it negative, positive, negative. The motor doesn't start because it's just going like that, energizing one way, then energizing the other. So we've got to throw this a little bit out of whack in order to make this work. Because when I hook up power to this thing, whether I hook it up to both windings or one winding doesn't make any difference. It peaks at the same time. Now, if I were to add a part in there that allowed it to peak at a different time, that would start winding to peak at actually a different time. Because this is time. As we move along this way, this is time. So, if I had something in there that changed that start winding the time that it was energized, it would be a little bit out of phase. 
That little bit out of phase is what gets the motor to start. Now we've got the sine wave there. It's knocked a little bit out of phase. Okay, here's a cap. Uh, so what is this capacitor? And we're going to just make a simple explanation. It's a battery. It's a battery that charges very quickly and discharges very quickly if it's given a chance. So when I feed power into this thing, it is absorbing that power. Now this red line is the capacitor uh, or the winding, the second, the start winding uh, that's fed with the capacitor. So as this power goes up, this capacitor is energizing. It's filling up and getting full right here. Then as the power starts to drop, this feeds back into the circuit because there's more power in the capacitor than there is uh, on this sine wave of the power coming in. So it, what it does is it just actually pushes it down a little bit, pushes it a little bit out of phase, a little bit later time. As this one comes down, this one comes down later. And because it feeds back into there as this voltage drops, it makes that out of phase condition. And that's all it takes to get one of these to start. So I'm starting here, the power is going up, the capacitor charging, 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 then it's leveling off as this black line goes down this starts feeding power back into this circuit and this starts dropping. It also limits the amount of power that can go into the start winding because this is an electronic device. It is a, a power limiting device in many ways. But it's feeding back into that circuit and just moving this sine wave down a little bit. Now that's the simplest explanation I can come up with for how the capacitor works. Just moves that sine wave over a little bit, gives a little bit out of phase so that thing can start. These are not hard start motors. Hard start motors in single phase, you know, we're, we're talking everything single phase here is what we're talking about. Hard start motors, they're going to require something like this, which is a start capacitor. This is a much larger strength capacitor than this one is. Not made to stay in the circuit for more than half a second or so. Uh, but, and it would, uh, it would put this well out of phase because of its large strength. Anyway, I hope this makes sense. Uh, I don't want to try to get into the weeds of how these are, uh, how these things work. You could go on for hours about these silly things. But just pushing that out of phase because that capacitor is a storage device that feeds power back in a little bit later than the original sine wave. So I guess that's it on this one.